I was working in Rome, I was a carabiniere, a policeman. I come from that background that I was far, far away from God. One day I was asked an important question. Do you believe in God? I didn't think that was a life-changing question. My name is uh, Deacon Pasquale Cinotti. I was born in Italy and I've been living in the UK for uh, many years now. I also serve as a permanent deacon in, uh, in the parish of All Saints in Newport, which is part of the Archdiocese of uh, Cardiff. People are not interested to hear good story about faith, but they're very much, very much interested uh, to hear when things are going wrong. I say this hearing because looking back, I never firsthand experienced anything that um, was negative within uh, the church. And also to pass on an important message to those who live far away from the church, far away from God, that God is there with you, wherever you are, even if you are so far away or you think you are so far away from Him. I say this because I come from that background where I lived and I was far, far away from God. In those days, I proudly professed myself to be a practicing atheist. I was in Italy, I was working in Rome, I was a carabiniere, a policeman an important job. One day I was asked an important question. I didn't think that was a life-changing question on that particular day. Bruno, that was the, the person name, asked me this question. He said, Pasquale, can I ask you something? Do you believe in God? I went with my hand like this, you know, when, and I was about to leave. I said, what kind of question is this? But then, Remember I said I was a practicing atheist. I went back because there were seven, eight of us there. And I said, these young guys, they, they need to, to know the truth. If they do believe in this God, they need to know. So I went back and I said, guys, listen, God does not exist. I said, look at the church. It's a huge, a massive business. But then I asked him a question. I said, Bruno, do you remember that prayer that we learned when we were little children in school, you know? And he said, which prayer? And I, and I said, it's the, the prayer with the bread, and I couldn't remember it. This was the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. And we said the whole of prayer together, and for me it was to remember an old poetry, an old song that we learned in, in primary school, you know? And uh, then I asked him, what about the sign of the cross? I said, which, which side do you go to, this, this side? And he showed me how to do the sign of the cross. This is how far I was. It must be the end of May, June, because I remember the weather was so, so pleasant. I sat down on this bench and I put my, ear, my hand on my ears like this. It was to stop this voice, but it wasn't coming from outside. It, it, it was from within, but also from outside. And it was a voice that told me about God, the creator of all things. I was walking down to go to work on that day, and the person who was coming up in the same uniform policeman now, uh, as me, was Giovanni, a friend of mine, which I didn't meet for, for a few years. I was so happy to have seen my friend, and he had a delivery of books. So he was putting this on the shelves and setting up, you know, tidying up the library, and I, I helped him. 
And uh, before I left, he said, Pasquale, why don't you take some of these books? I said, no, because I, I didn't like to read. Now I love reading. This is what fate does to you as well. I looked at the books and I seen the prices, you know, the tag prices. They were all just in a, in a box with a brown paper around them. So I didn't know what the books were about. But I picked up the most expensive ones with the idea of reselling them, not to read them. So I picked up three books. And as I walked into my room, that again, that voice, but this time a gentle invitation. That's what it was, to pick up one of those books, to read. And I thought to myself, okay, but which one, the three books? And I opened up three of them, exactly the, the same books. The title on the book surprised me. The title was Vangelo Nuovo Testamento, New Testament. I know now why I, the books were wrapped up you know, in paper, because if I could have seen the title, I would have never picked them up in the first place. So I started to read these books, and I was in bed. I don't know how the time has passed, because it must have been about quarter to four in the morning when I looked at my watch, and I said, what? Time had just flown by. I, I, I often think about that, how quickly the time has gone, and I was so taken by the things I was reading. What I've been reading here is powerful stuff. So if this man is truly, he is who we saying he is, I want to know. I want to know more about this Jesus. That's where my journey back home started, really. You know, I ended up leaving uh, the police, the Carabinieri, and um, pursued my previous passion, you know, the, the hospitality. I ended up also taking a degree because I wanted to know more about this Jesus, but I wanted to know more about faith in general. So I took a degree in philosophy and religious studies. Christianity was my calling, especially because seeing Christianity, I noticed the relationship that we have with God as a father. I think that was so important. Um, so Christianity was my pursuit and to, to follow this journey. I will go and find out and search. And I was determined to do that. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I want to see how the early Christians lived, how they practiced their faith, what did they, you know, in what they believed as Christians. And I will follow their example because they were the ones who lived closer to Jesus. You know, so I said, to me, it will make sense to listen what they said, what they did, and I will do exactly what they did, because I'm sure after 2,000 years, so many things have changed, and we as human beings alter things, and, and we make, uh, you know, things to follow Jesus in our own terms, surely. And um, I will look at those men, and you know, I found out that these men were actually called the apostolic fathers of the church. I didn't know about this. And I started to read uh, these fathers, you know, Irenaeus, Clements, Justin Martyrs, uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch. Imagine, he wrote some amazing letters, seven letters in fact, which were really important for, for, for me. And the more I read about these apostolic fathers, more I was dragged in into the Catholic faith. One Sunday morning, I got up, decided to go to church for the first time, I guess in many, many, many years. But I walked into that church. I didn't know the answers to the Mass. I didn't receive the sacraments. But you know, when I left on that day, I remember walking out of the church and going, <sighs> breathing like that. And I was feeling so good so well, but nothing wrong with me when I walked into the church before I, you know, I had a great job, everything was going well for me. But when I walked out of the church, something has changed. I was smiling and I was so happy. I, I was almost flying home. I, and yet I couldn't understand why. And God gave me a beautiful analogy before this. 
don't know if any of you has ever gone subdiving, okay? When you are breathing uh, with the artificial air underwater. That's fine, you're okay, you're breathing fine. I promise you, the very first thing you do when you go above the surface of the water, you take the mask off and you go natural air. You breathe in natural air, it's a difference there. So the, the air that my soul has been breathing for so many years now was that kind of artificial air. As I walked into the church now, as I stepped into the church, my soul was breathing that natural air. For us as Catholics, that the church is not just a house of prayer. The church is also the house of the living God. Christ in all its essence, body, blood, soul, and divinity, in all its essence, in all its reality, is present in such a way in only two places. And this is at the right hand of the Father in heaven and in the tabernacle of every Catholic church. You know, after uh, the first day that I went back to church, I also started to learn my prayers. But the way I was praying was from the heart. And that's where kind of problem started. I said, usually when you, you, you start making your way to the church, you think it's, it's going to be easy. Things are going to be even better. At least that's what I expected, you know, because you are learning about God and your faith. And I'm sure God will bless you and will help you even further. Because after a few days or a week that I started going to church, I went back the following week. That's where at night time I started to have kind of problems. First night I didn't sleep properly, but this is things that were happening even after that. In fact, the second night, the third night, up to the point where I started to hear almost like a big pressure on my chest. Then I could start feeling, you know, hands, you know, my chest, like a kind of suffocation, suffocation of my throat. And uh, imagine. You're now about to come and believe in God. How can you believe that there are other kind of things also that exist and such as evil um, things or demons or, or, or whatever this could be because the swearing that I was hearing was diabolical, evil. So it's a kind of a difficult, difficult moment. And um, I left on that day and I was just about my whole journey so far. And in fact, I remember sitting in, in the town center and uh, thinking of that particular day, I said, see, when we are in, in, you know, ready to let go, give up, the devil doesn't miss a chance. I said this because on that very moment, a person, a young man came to sit next to me, smoking a cigarette and um, start talking in you know, general things. And uh, then he asked, what are you doing? I said, well, I came to see a you know, the priest in church. Oh, I said, are you Catholic? I said, no, really, I'm just starting to learn about the faith and things. Um, and I'm going through a difficult moment. So I told him all that was happening. And he said, you are talking to the right person. He even said, see, our God cares for you because that's why I came and sat here next to you. You know, I'm a part of a spiritualist church. And he explained briefly what they do, and he said, come on Thursday evening at seven o'clock and we will help you. And this is what I did. I went to the spiritualist church on that Thursday and what happens into a spiritualist church, you have kind of a desk where the medium sit on one side and the congregation on the other side. And they think they speak to our departed members of the family, those who are dear to us, who have gone before us, or angels. And they receive kind of messages from these entities and um, to help the person. Unfortunately, who speaks to this medium, I have to say this, dear brothers and sisters, it's not our beloved ones who are gone before us or dead, because they live in the peace of God. But who speaks to them is, is the demons. Very evening, um, I had one of the worst attack ever. And uh, so that was the day when I said no more. That was the part when I said, God, I don't know if you even exist, but I don't want to know anymore. That evening, I went to bed without saying 
uh, even my prayers. And that's what I had an amazing um, dream or a vision. I don't know how you can call it. I was taken back in, in time. I was in a Roman time. I could see the Roman guards marching. I could see that the, the way they were, uh, you know, wearing the uniform. I remember getting closer and I said, but what is happening? I could see as they were slamming their feet, marching, and the, the sword they were carrying. But that was crazy, they couldn't see me. And I was so touched by this. I said, but what's happening? Why am I seeing this? And all of a sudden I could see this group of guards and the man, this man in the center. And he looked at me and I said, oh, we can see me. But why and who is he? As I was thinking about this, he looked and, I, and he said his name. He said, I'm Gennaro. And I knew about the saint, Saint Gennaro, because in Italy it's, it's very popular. Once a year, the blood of this saint becomes liquid, and even the national news tells of the event, you know? But I always thought this is one of the, the things of the church, you know, as a business to bring people into the church. How can it be that the man who, who died for 2,000 years ago now, his body becomes liquid, alive in a certain way? But this is the saint I'm seeing, he was dressed in this dark red robe and he looked at me straight in the eyes and I, the scenery changed. I was in a different location, in a prison. And that's when they brought him in. They just threw him onto the wall. I remember that he was thrown onto the wall with such violence because he had, as he was slammed onto the wall, he felt the pain on his shoulder. He was dropped onto the floor, there was hay on the floor. Early morning, out in this big square, and I was there and he looked at me in the eyes. As I was looking at me, the soldier, they stretched his hands and they cut his head. Just before that, he looked at me and without speaking, just through the eyes, he said, Pasquale, I'm giving my life for Jesus, for the gospel. You, for a little trouble, for a little trouble that the evil one is giving you, you are ready to give up your faith. And he said, fell onto the floor and I jumped from this kind of a dream and I, and I couldn't believe. I, I remember waiting uh, till it would become a bit later to call home and I asked my mom and I decided to speak to my family, tell them what was happening. And my dad told me, you know, strange that you are telling me this because only last week I was talking to a friend who has a problem with his niece and they are bringing him to an exorcist. And I said, what, an exorcist? And I thought, I was so far from it, I thought an exorcist was a film. I didn't know that there's a priest, a Catholic priest, nominated by a bishop, uh, you know, with a ministry to help people with these kind of problems, and, and it's called an exorcist. So we went to see this priest, and um, he told me when he saw me, he said, yes, Pasquale, it was very charismatic. Uh, he said, you know, that." two demons, you know, this is what is happening, I can see clearly, but God is allowing this to happen because he has a plan on your life. And he said, your new father will be helping you to support you during these times. And in fact, my father was the only one, you know, not my mother, not my, you know, three brothers or my sister, one night time, my father could hear the swearing, the cursing, and he would run into my bedroom. And at times he could say, he said to me, I could see that even the curtains, as he opened the door, flying as the evil one would leave. And he would come into the bed and pray the rosary and give me some time to rest and sleep. I was confirmed at the age of, uh, you know, late. I was confirmed at the age of 29. And I took a name as a saint name, a confirmation, Gennaro. My journey of faith scare people, but we are not to give too much importance to the evil one or his activity at all. But the point I want us to focus is on the reality, the importance of the church, because this is what really changed my life. And um, one of the fathers of the church once said, you cannot take God as your father if you don't take the church as your mother. This was so true for me. I realize that the church is so beautiful. 
a mother in many ways. Church gave me more freedom and the view on things that has forever changed my life. The calling for me to the diaconate um, is that God has not called qualified. He himself qualifies those whom he calls. And uh, I decided to say, okay, yes, here I am, Lord. If, you, if it is you that you are calling me, I'm here, I'm ready to help and serve into the church, into my home, into our home. So when I went to speak to my parish priest then, Father John, and when I told him this, he jumped from the desk and he, and he put his arm around me. This, this isn't Father John, you know. Uh, when I see him, I often, I often mention to him. And, and he says, yeah, that's true, you know. But the next thing, I was contacted by from the director of formation. And he said, well, one of the first things you need to do is to go to this clinic uh, where they do all different kind of uh, assessment, and intelligence tests, uh, the, the psychological tests, and, and all this. I was sent for three days in, um, in Manchester. Uh, not, not easy, the tests. I wasn't expecting anything like that. I was admitted into formation. There was a prebiotic year and then four years of diagonal formation. And the week before my ordination, I remember thinking, whatever happens, if I do get ordained by the grace of God or not, I'm so happy, so pleased that I've done these studies. Because, you know, faith is a gift, and we all agree with that. But also, I learned that we are called to study our faith. And that was so enriching for me, you know, to, to know more about my faith. And that strengthened that personal relationship with Christ, you know, because when you know someone and the more you know that person, if he's the right person for you, the more you fall in love with the person. And the more I was getting to know Christ and his teaching, and the more I was falling in love uh, with him. The ordination of that day I will never forget to be called uh, to serve as a deacon within the church. A big responsibility, a big grace and a gift for me, and a gift not to be kept just by myself, but a gift, a call to share whatever I received from God, a call to follow Christ, and a reminder that we are called to follow and not to lead, because sometimes we like to follow Jesus in our own terms, and uh, uh, it's important to stop at times and to see where we stand before God and each other and to refocus on our journey. We are on a journey to God, a journey of faith. Surely there are challenges, surely there are troubles, there are difficulty on our journey. And uh, there might be a time when we are going through challenges. There might be an illness in the family, financial problems, or maybe an addiction, you know, addiction to pornography, to, uh, to play and to alcohol. Or I don't know what can keep us awake at night, but what I'm telling you here, and what I promise you here, is that those who will put their trust in the Lord, they will never, ever be put to shame. Faith is not about ticking boxes, you know, done, 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 no. It's about an experience, it's about an encounter with a living person, with Christ, who leads us and inspires us through the Holy Spirit, to God the Father, to fulfill the mission, which is ultimately to share in God's plan, which is a plan of love and plan of salvation in which we're all called to take part. We are called to, to trust. We are called to believe. We are called to surrender to God. And sometimes our plans are not God's plan and our ways are not His ways. But I can see me and my life before. Yes, okay, a great job, a good position, but I was lacking something so important, something that filled my heart. 
was lacking to know the truth. And what I mean by this word, the truth, Christ. And when you encounter Christ, it's a life-changing experience. It's not about you anymore. It's about the person around you then. It's not doesn't mean that things are going to be easy. But you know that on this journey with you, you are not alone. God is with you. Ten years of sharing the peace of Christ. Shalom World, God's own channel.